Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at my budget Tempo Rogue Saviors of Uldum edition. So what Tempo Rogue does is that Tempo Rogue tries to win the game by going under the other decks a little, being a little bit faster and really denying the other deck the opportunity to answer its place. Tempo Rogue has access to cards such as Sap and such as Vendetta and the Thunderbelly Fence and the SI7 Agent. So there are lots of these cards that when you're building a board, you're hitting face, your opponent tries to respond and you're saying, haha, denied, that minion is going to die for zero mana, or that minion is going straight back to your hand and I will keep hitting you. The deck also has some potential value in it because it has a bunch of these burgle type effects. There's Pharaoh Cat, well create a random reborn minion to your hand, and some of those are pretty good. Blink Fox gives you random cards from your opponent's class. And then there is the Hench Clan Burglar, discover a spell from another class. So these can sometimes give you some surprises, and surprises are good. You want to be able to surprise your opponent. And the deck has a bunch of reach because it has combos such as South Sea Deckhand and Crazed Chemist, give a friend the minion plus four attack. If you happen to have a board, you want to Crazed Chemist some kind of a high health minion so that then it can probably survive. But even if you have already lost the board, then South Sea Deckhand charging in with the Crazed Chemist, that's six damage. So you still have some tools to go with that one as well. Not to mention that with the Evil Miscreant, you also have access to Lackeys, so lots of surprises. Compared to my similar build during Rise of Shadows, I have changed six cards. The new additions are two copies of Deadly Poison, two copies of Pharaoh Cat, and two copies of Hooked Skimitar. So we actually got four new cards from Saviors of Uldum. Saviors of Uldum has been a pretty expensive expansion, lots of good cards are epics or legendaries, but Hooked Skimitar, Pharaoh Cat are some of the good commons in the new expansion and they see play in this rogue deck. This is now adjusted to the new meta, so Pharaoh Cat is my new one drop of choice. It replaces Pilfer. Pilfer was more reliable in activating Underbelly Fence, but Pharaoh Cat gives on average more value and also it still sometimes is able to activate the fence immediately. And now that I have Minion and this activation combined, I also dropped the Argent Squire and I added in Deadly Poison. Because the meta currently does like clerics on one and these sorts of nasty little things. And Deadly Poison on my dagger can help me deal with those early in the game. Or it can help me push some damage to the face later. And finally I got the Fan of Knives, the meta is not very heavy on one one tokens at the moment. And that allowed me to add the Hooked Skimitar. Combo this, it's a 4-2 weapon, that one's going facewards, and another way to just push a little bit more damage. Overall, I have been extremely happy with this deck. It is able to control the flow of the game, you deny opponent from doing things, you have just the right amount of damage, lots of damage for a budget deck. And with Lackey's Reborn Minion Spurgle cards, you also have a number of surprises up your sleeve, which is something you don't often get to do on a budget, because you don't have those expensive cards, but when you can discover and get some random effects going, then you're able to actually have an adjusting game plan with this one. As for the mulligans with this deck, you're typically looking for your Pharaoh Cat, you're looking for your Underbelly Fence, Blink Fox, Miscreant, depending a bit on the matchup, backstab, SI7 agent. These sorts of early plays that can help you take over the game. Try to look for a curve, try to look for cards that synergize with each other. If you enjoy this content, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now, let's go take a look at Budget Temper Rogue in action. We need value against Warrior. Okay, well, Pharaoh Cat sometimes gives me class reborn minions, which in turn can activate the underbelly fence. And sometimes it does not. In this case, it did. So, underbelly fence is active. This is like, I can't remember, 20, 30 percent something. It's by no means guaranteed. Here we go with the underbelly fence and then we start hitting face. Let's go. He can't rush yet, but next turn he can. 
frightened flunky. That's scary to you. I don't want to play the Grand Mummy because then the Vendetta is useless. I can play Hench Converter next turn to activate the Vendetta. I can play the Grand Mummy. Yeah, we're going to do that. I'm going to backstep that one. And I'm going to play the Grand Mummy. Because with the Hench Clan Burglar I can always reactivate the Vendetta. Yeah, this is completely fine. Warpath doesn't do anything to this. Rush minions obviously useful. Not really wanting to give that plus four attack now against the proud defender. So I could activate the Vendetta. I could hit these in buff that one. Then activate the Vendetta to kill the Proud Defender. This one goes face. I think that's acceptable. Let's do that. Hit with this. Hit with that so that I guarantee the buff on the fence. Then the Hench Clan Burglar. Mm hmm. Probably Conjurer's Calling, right? Probably that over Hex. And then Vendetta that one down, push face. Alright, we actually did a damaged warrior. Nice. Yeah, but your decks are sometimes fun. They can also be very frustrating at times, especially when you're building them. And hi, Vinke. Did not want to rush in yet. Fine. I mean, it is Crazed Chemist time. He could just have a brawl though. But I think I need to backstab here. This is easier. This is the most difficult to kill, so Kemi is that one. And we push as hard as we can. I get the warrior down to 16 health. He has a rush minion in hand now. And I assume he can deal with the 8 4. But there's still other minions, so he kind of does need a brawl here to have a really good answer. Mummy doesn't line up that well because there's a couple of four health minions. Warpath into Mummy might be good. Now he has two rush minions in hand. So he can just double Mummy into the 8-4. And I have nine on board. Seven mana. Nine here. I can do 13. Then I have 5 from hand for next turn. I have to try that. I think that is the only way. Hmm. They could be a Ziliax. Sucks if there is. But I think this is the only way. I need to push very hard. Next turn I have Life Drinker, SI7 Agent. I have 5 from hand. So if he simply armors up, he's at 4. If he just plays Ziliax and armors up, well, that's also not enough. I think we have him cornered. I don't think with 7 mana. He can both heal and clear well enough. What can you do, Control Warrior? What can you do? I mean, there's also the matter of the Grand Mummy Detrattle giving a buff to a minion. So... Tough position to be a Control Warrior in. This deck isn't very good against Control Warrior. Well, that was desperate. But let's see. Then and Divine Spirit in particular, I guess, because Topsy Turvy exists. And that would have also sold everything, right? I don't think I want to attack with the weapon with a deadly poison in hand. I don't expect Mage to play anything. Okay, I did not expect Mage to play at Zephyrus this early. But I'll take it. I mean, I'm going to backstab that so that I can play Miscreant. So that I can get some lackeys. And I like lackeys. Now we have a rush lackey and we have a two cost minion lackey. Alright. Well, that wild crow does mean that he can get some nasty things going very, very quickly. Oh boy. 
Let's summon a two cost minion. Hope it's not a doomsayer. I like that. And then I think I'm also playing the SI7 agent here. Because I need to start pushing. And I need to start pushing now. Time will run short soon. So that's probably going to be Flame Ward. And Flame Ward would indeed kill my entire board here. But it's not like I can stop. I have to attack. So we attack. Then the Flame Ward procs. We attack with the biggest minion so we got most damage possible in. And it's time to play a Pharaoh Cat. I do like good Wasteland Assassin. But I still need more tempo here. Another Pharaoh Cat could potentially give this one buff if I can find a Reborn minion from another class. Or I could simply go with the Life Drinker here. I think I'm going with the Life Drinker now. Just get some more minions on the spot. Galaxy incoming. Yes, the moment he gets some time, undoubtedly. He might not even need the Galaxy, to be honest. Oh, he had the Galaxy all along. Fine. This does look like a Wasteland Assassin play. Do I also want to Deadly Poison now so that I can push 7 damage to the face this turn? I think I do. Yes, we're just going in as quickly as we can. And we're getting that Wasteland Assassin out there. Okay, now Galaxy has been played, so... As the things can happen. I do have a sap here, so it's not all bad. Probably a Highlander mage, so Conjurer's Calling is unlikely. Reno is fun and everything, but this one is going to be stealth after re rebirth again. But can he set up just so that he just kills me next turn? With like an Alex Strauss at the face, he probably can just kill me next turn. Oh, or if he can cast another spell now. Okay. Not that spell, though. Well, Alexstrasza is still lethal. And that's going to be an ancient... I mean, Ice Barrier. So he's at 22. Okay. Okay, he drew the absolute nuts that I lost. Fine. That can happen. Okay. I can see how you can lose a game like this. 15, 19, 21, 23. He just put 31 power on the board last turn. And that was turn 6. 31 attack and 35 health. 31, 35 on turn 6. And 2 secrets. That's a little bit unfortunate. Gotcha. There's the ice barrier, which I knew of course was going to be there. Need to play the Pharaoh Cat over there. I'll have to try to Vendetta that one. There could be a counter spell. Then I'll sap the Mountain Giant. I don't think I can deal 15 from hand next turn. Yeah, I cannot. So I, I do need to concede. Something like this might work against Priest. Is this deck performing now? Hard to say. But Priest, eh? We play the cat and we get... Well, Generous Mummy is not exactly what I want against the Combo Priest. That was powerful too. Because I was planning to kill the potential cleric with coin SI7 agent. But now obviously I cannot do that. If I coin blink fox. Then I have 4 power on the board. And I have the ability to get the underbelly fence out there. But is that going to be strong enough? I mean I have a sap. I just wouldn't really want to use it yet. 
I think I'm going in the blink, Fox. I always have Sap as a last resort. Alright, which deck do you recommend to beat Contra Warrior? Oh, there are so many. Quest Ruid with Nomi is great. Uh, Highland Mage is great. Megatoon Warlock, but its problem is that it doesn't beat much else. Quest Paladin. Oh no. Full Norchire. Ouch. That's painful stuff. Always hurts to see the full Norchire. I can't kill both Norchires here. No. Just don't have enough mana. How much is this worth to you? But Fence and Blink Fox can kill the bigger Norchire. But now if he just plays like Circle. Oh dear, oh dear. Too too much. Too much card draw. Can't handle all the no clerics. I had the tools to handle a 1 3 no cleric, but 1 5 no cleric on 2 just was too much. I know both are damaged too, so I can't even backstab anything. I'll need to scheme here. I'll scheme this. I can trade it away. And then I can kill the Nochar Cleric finally. But by now he will have some Psycho Bomb action coming. Psycho Bombing Cleric or Tolvir? Probably a Cleric. That's an upside. Is this the moment where I need to go for tempo? With a sap here. Sap and everything goes face. Hope that he can find a pyromancer. Because if he finds a pyromancer... That's going to be the end of the board. I think this is one of those moments. We're sapping that. And we're pushing everything to the face. Put him down to 16 and ask him, do you have a wild pyromancer? Do you? He could also psycho pump. Two thirds of the time it resurrects a cleric, which is terrible. One third it brings a tall beer. Other, other than that, he has to have a pyromancer here. And also he needs to have spells. It's not just a pyromancer, he needs to have more than that. Okay, he had pyromancer and he had more than that. That kind of sucks. Probably need to grab the execute here. But I still need to use the vendetta this turn. To kill off that pyro. Here we go. Then try to push. Dagger up. So... That's an acolyte. And the rest of the hand is unknown to me. So I probably have to... But this one can kill me if he has combo pieces. That's obviously harsh. From 29 he still needs a powered shield. Even if he has double divine spirit. Because he can get to 28 with divine spirit, divine spirit, inner fire. I think I need to blink, Fox. I think I have to execute the Ahmed. Then I have to try to push again. So Divine Spirit, Divine Spirit, Inner Fire is 28. I'm at 29. He would need to have Arms or Powered Shield in addition to full combo. If he wants to just kill me now. Very low chance to get a Taunt Minion out of that. Because only one taunt minion has died. He doesn't have a natural way to generate taunts. I'm currently kind of threatening lethal, but not really. Is 
17, 18 damage here. 5 plus 4, that's 9 damage. We're a little off here. Not much, but a little. I have the option to kill the Psycho Pump. Push 7. That would put him down to 4. Because if I can get like a Crazed Chemist top deck, that might do it. I go to 26, then I go back to 29. Circle Divine Spirit in a fire. Here we go. This is okay. Just push with these. Dagger up again. So Circle Divine Spirit Inner Fire would do it. But that's a multi-card combo. Okay, this might be able to draw it. But now it's not enough anymore. Now he still needs the Arms or Powered Shield in addition to another Divine Spirit in order to just win here. He could get the other injured Tolvir, which are the only Taunt minions in his deck. But if he can't pick that up... Well, I have only 6 damage in hand at the moment. I would need to top deck something useful. He's at 7 and I have 6 damage here. Acceptable victory. Let's see. Where would Kumbu Pistimi be able to fit more taunts? Yeah, it can be a bit difficult for them. Cat time. Cat gives me Berserker. Interesting. Hunter. Hmm. Coining a secret. Surprised I am. I can't proc it. Unless it's, unless it's a snipe. It is not a snipe. Pressure plate, rat trap, snake trap. Couldn't proc the secret. That's unfortunate. I of course wanted to proc the secret. I really, really did. Oh well. We keep hitting him in the face for now. He could have a mask contender. But I, I just couldn't proc like snakes if it's snakes. That would have been terrible. Very low tempo. So looks like a death rattle hunt. I mean the Highlander hunter to me. No other hunter would have this low tempo. I kind of still don't want to proc a snake trap here. Just another cat. It's Skimitar or the SI7. SI7 makes Unleash better. I could use SI7 also to deal with some threats later. I guess SI7 is fine here. It's SI7 that one and push face. I played two cards so I didn't proc potential rat trap. It could still be a pressure play too. Hmm. Well, time to figure that out this later. I need to try to start pushing now. Desert Spear. Not too intimidating yet. Good. <laughs> I could play Halazi the Lynx. I still don't want to attack into the minion. If I don't want to burn a card I could play Halazi and then I could backstab the Shimmer Fly. Then I will see if it's a pressure plate. I believe that is the way. We. Then all of these are going face first. 
plate. And then we figure out if it's pressure plate. It is not a pressure plate. Very well. So it is either rat or it is snakes. I still have a sap available. We're getting to points where he can do some pretty nice plays with Unleash, should he find that. As Contender, giving Explosive Trap would be very powerful. He could swing me to the face and then he could use the Locust to hit into the SI7 Agent. Or he could do that in order to, buff, to bluff Explosive Trap. I love it when they bluff Explosive Trap. I mean, I hate it when they do, because I can't tell all, most of the time, but I think it's such a great move. I think people cut Explosive. That's surprising if that happens, really. I guess we're about to find out. This is the least important minion, right? Or is Halazi less important than this one? Attacking first means that the minion is going to be destroyed. Halazi is actually least important. So if it's a freezing drop, I want Halazi to be frozen. I mean, I don't know what you're so astounded about. Because this is going exactly as I wanted it to. I get to play another reborn minion. And I get to play the Skimitar. Okay, sniping a reborn minion. I'm cool with that. Go ahead and snipe it. While I push more damage in. Sure, now he might be able to clean up the whole board. And it can still be Rat Trap or Snake Trap, the remaining one. Oh, Cypress is going to be so clutch here. Just need to be careful with the Rat and try to find some good stuff from my deck. My shield for Argon. And Defender of Argos, obviously. A nice, nice tool. So the one one is going to rush into my tree one. And I kind of don't want to sap his Zepress. And I have six damage here. It's time to get some luckies. And then it's time to backstep there. Now it's time to proc the rat trap. It's obviously time to proc the rat trap. It was actually snakes. Well, it's time to proc the snakes then. And get some more Lynxes over here and Lynxes over here and hit with that and hit with that and five, seven. I have seven coming here and seven coming here is acceptable. This one goes in, this one goes in, this weapon goes in. We'll put him down to three health. I have Sap, I have Cobalt Lucky, and I have a Dagger. And those should be enough to kill him next turn. That's the plan at the moment. Trade as you like. I have a Sap. Yeah, that one's going to get Sapped and... Just lucky him in the face a little bit. And we take the game. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.